This video is sponsored by Private Internet Access. I mean, how will we ever find this if it's secret? This is definitely camping in the rain and doing it right. Yeah. I don't think this is the right part of the tent. Joe, oh, no. <laughs> Hey everybody. Syntax 77 here, along with my dog Denali back in action and my lovely wife, Sarah. And we are here in Shenandoah National Park. Gonna do a little national park backpacking. Uh, a couple of days, it is like mid-April and we got a bunch of fun food and we're right about, oh, we have more than a bunch. We have, <laughs> what did we say, a pound a mile? <laughs> yeah, I think we have about a pound of food per mile. We got a fry pan, we got grilled cheese and breakfast sandwiches and God knows what else. <laughs> so there's gonna be a lot of eating and um, a couple miles. Uh, the whole loop that we're about to do out here in this beautiful area that is Shenandoah National Park is probably under 10 miles, maybe eight-ish miles and two, two days and one night. So right now we're at the two mile, is it two mile run overlook? Sounds right. Yeah, that's what we're at right now. And the actual trailhead doesn't have parking in front of it, but it's up there and it's Rocky Mount Trail. And that is gonna take us to the top of Rocky Mount where I'm gonna let you in on this. We're gonna go to a secret campsite. And how do I know it's secret? Well, because it. <laughs> Sarah found it published in this magazine, <laughs> Backpacker Magazine, January edition. But you can see right there, it says secret, secret <laughs> campsite. So we're probably the first people that have ever been there, except for the guy who wrote this. I'm gonna be so sad if it's taken. It is a dry site though. We got to hike up to it and there's no water. So I think that probably puts the odds in our favor. I hope. I'm going to write a very strongly written letter to Backpacker Magazine if I get up there and there's people there. Yes, we do have a contingency plan though. If there's people up there, we will um, keep going down to Gap Run, which is um, a body of water, like a stream. But anyway, Sarah's got her tiny little pack. I don't know what her base weight is, but I bet you it's uh, it might be six pounds. I don't know. Well, then again, you got a stool and some other fun stuff. My base weight, I just don't want to know. Definitely not doing ultralight on this one. Let me clip your water so it's not bouncing all over the place. Turn. Somebody actually just, oops, somebody actually just asked about this on a video. Do I have problems with the giant pockets with the bottles coming out? But pretty much if you clip it like that and pull a little tension on it for these own packs. No, you know what the secret is. What? Very clear. So they are wide. Yeah. Pa pouches, but yeah. see if you put a thing of wine. Oh. There, it nestles the bottle securely. Okay. You're right. So forget what I said about the, the cordage. Just, yeah, do what Sarah says. Which, by the way, Shenandoah National Park, all national parks have different rules, but no prohibition on drinking wine in the backcountry. The backcountry can't have a fire, though. No, no campfires. But we will have wine. I'm ready to do it? Yeah. It is nice out. It's a little cool. It's like, I don't know, did you see? Is it like 60 degrees or something? Yeah. 62? Okay. Um, it's two might go down into the high 40s, mid 40s, not too bad. Our, our number one challenge is um, in within a few hours, we do have a bit of a threat of rain. I think it's definitely going to rain at some point, whether it's in three or four hours, I'm not sure. We're only going three or four miles, so hopefully that timing works out. No bicycles or vehicles, no hunting. No campfires. It's the only kind of downside, but that's all right. It's gonna be raining. Anyway. Yup, and I wouldn't want to put a campfire underneath of our nice Dutchware tarp. Yeah. So probably wouldn't have had one tonight anyway. By tomorrow morning, um, the rain should taper off, and then it'll be clear tomorrow, and we'll hike our way out on the rest of the loop down towards these streams and 
should be nice. We've never done this, um, either of these trails before. It's kind of lesser traveled, hence the reason that it's secret. Yeah, I got good news for you though. Yeah, we're already a half mile in. You know what that means? We gotta eat every mile. <laughs> we skipped breakfast this morning. We had some Jimmy Dean breakfast sausages. We were gonna microwave at the hotel and uh, neither of us were hungry. And then we said, maybe we'll hit Dunkin' Donuts. And then guess what? No Dunkin' Donuts in the hour or a little under an hour drive between here and the hotel. So. Here we are. Here we are with some falling Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwiches. Uh, I've just been informed that um, the flower that my lovely wife stuck in my ear when I was not paying attention has been there the entire time. For those of you who can't take me seriously or have already tuned out, <laughs> well, you're not here, but I would apologize to you if you were still watching. It looks so good. You know, whatever. Screw you. You don't like that. Real, real women wear flowers. Thank you. Is that Skyline Driver? I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah, I think like that's wine. it. Cutting through there. Yep. Yeah, Skyline Drive is about 90 miles, I think. It's the entire length of the park. Um, Shenandoah is just one long skinny park. It's only a handful of miles wide and 90 long. It's as long as our home state. Is it? That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, just about. Look at you dropping <sighs> the knowledge. So it's hard to make like big loops here because it's so skinny. Um, and almost all the loops you end up crossing over the road uh, Skyline Drive because it red, runs dead, sound, dead down the center. <laughs> can't speak i'm so <laughs> flustered about the flower experience his words are really coming easy to you <laughs> but yeah but what i was trying to say was this is about as big as a loop gets around here from our experience about eight to ten miles max without encountering a road but the junction should be just up here i think we're under a tenth of a mile uh from it might be a good spot to recharge with some food before heading up that final push there of the day. That one's extra crispy for you, Sarah. The cheese is bubbling. Looking pretty good. Sausage sandwich coming up for you. Oh man, yeah, I'm hungry. So right here. Is the final little wind of a trail. This trail's been beautiful. Looks like it winds around and gets up top. And then we make camp. Right now it is uh, one o'clock. It's got a little rockier and slowed us down a little bit. But um, like I said, it's been nice sights, but it's, we're not exactly trail running it. So, but even at this pace, I think we'll beat the rain. Where's the sandwich at again? It's heating up. <laughs> Give it some time. I thought it was done. You said the cheese is bubbling. Eh, it might be I'm done now. Sorry. All right. Oh, look at this service. This looks so good. Tell me if that's going to get you up the mountain. Up the mountain or not. Better. Looks like so much cheese. Oh, very good. Thank you. Good deal. All right. I guess I'll get into mine. And then. We'll see what we can do next here. This will be our last concrete post for today, <laughs> which is kind of impressive that they made these things out here. Um, but I guess it's going to last forever, Sarah and I were saying. And uh, all they do is pop these new rings on there. But I wouldn't want to be the one who had to drag these out here or the materials for it. <laughs> anyway, this is Gap Run Trail right here. Tomorrow, we're going to come back here and we'll end up right at this same post. Maybe we'll eat food again because we'll probably have done at least a mile. And then, with our rule. And then that gets us back to the vehicle. So this begins the actual loop portion. This is a tough. Speaking of choosing a safe route, I should probably take this opportunity to thank my sponsor for this video. 
Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access is a VPN provider. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. With Private Internet Access, all of your data goes through a secure encrypted tunnel and that will hide your IP address as well as all of your internet activity. Whether that be because you have a maybe less than scrupulous internet service provider that is logging all of your data as far as where you're going on the internet and possibly selling that history to other third parties, or perhaps they throttle you when you visit certain sites. They're not gonna see any of that data anymore. Private internet access offers over 30,000 servers to choose from in over 70 countries. Perhaps you're in a region of the world that is, oh, let's just say a little more oppressive when it comes to searching the internet or using streaming services, or you just wanna explore using your favorite video streaming service from a different part of the world or while you're away from home, you can do that. Whether you're on a desktop using Windows or Mac OS, or you're on a mobile device using Android or iOS, and a whole bunch more, they got you covered. Up to 10 devices with a single account. And no matter what device you're using, they have a strict no logs policy. If you just wanna try it out for yourself and see how it works, they have a 30 day money back guarantee so you don't have to worry about getting locked into anything like that. And in fact, for less than three bucks a month, you can get started with one of their plans. If you're a viewer of this channel, well use the link in my video description and you can get an additional three months for free. Private internet access. Thank you for sponsoring this video. Now it's time to get back out there into the woods. All right, Nolly. <laughs> Let's do it. You ready? You want to go on a hike? Want to go on a walk? Let's go. <laughs> Follow them blue blazes. The uphill begins. The wind is definitely sheltered in here. Either that or it's calmed down completely. Yeah, right. Calm before the storm. Yeah, literally. I've come up with really great ideas. Like, oh, yeah. it's supposed to rain, you know what yeah. you should do? Finally go backpacking. Damn, on a bluff. Yeah. <laughs> it's fully exposed. Fully exposed. Uh, 23 mile per hour gust tomorrow? Great. <laughs> Sold. I mean, tomorrow says sunny, but it does say some wind gust of 23 miles per hour. I just read that this morning. It's probably just the system leaving. That's cool over there though. Feeling this big old pack now, that's for sure. So it's up there. That's where we came from. We, so we came all the way down that. Cool. And then up around the edge of that guy. I think the storm will be coming from this direction I'm looking at. I mean, it's definitely cloudy, but. Not that it doesn't look too intense right now. Although it's still yeah. a couple hours before. Well, they said three o'clock here. Oh, really? Yeah, that's only an hour and a half from now. Oh my gosh. We gotta high knee it up. High knee it up. All right, I guess we're gonna do this. Onward and upward. I'm wondering what this spot's gonna look like as far as I mean, if it's just big enough for a tent, like with the rain coming, I'd like some common area. But I guess we won't know for sure till we get there because all we have is the glamorous shot from your magazine. Oh, this has got to be it. I can feel it. I can feel it. Woo. It's secret, Sarah, so we might not see a path. I mean, how will we ever find this if it's secret? All right. Oh my gosh. Do that research, Sarah. I think it is down here. No way. <laughs> Why do you let me pick this? <laughs> this cannot be it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, put a tent right there. Why don't you? No, that can't be it. Nobody would put a tent on that, Sarah. See, look. He's sitting on that rock. No. Where's his tent? <laughs> right, right. Where's this tree? Look for that. I, I can't. It's over the edge. No. 
And look, the mountain's behind them right there. Oh, God, no. Who would put a tent here? Is this not? That's no secret. It's just unintelligent. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> Don't what have you done? What have you done? This is what he's sitting on, isn't it? Oh my god, this is what he's sitting on? Do you have a backup? Yeah, but you have to go down the mountain oh, to the water. No, I'm not doing that. Wait, I don't see that route, but it, it's down. Who knows when this photo was taken. <laughs> oh my god, this wind. I think we should push a little more and just make sure. Put I... your tent as close to the edge as you dare. There's only one obvious spot, but don't worry, it's seldom occupied. Yeah, I wonder why. Really? No way. When in doubt, there are more sites past the summit about a mile down the Gap Road Trail. <laughs> oh no. I think we should push ahead and see what else we got going can on. Can we at least take a photo here? You can take a photo here, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sleeping in a tent with the dog here. Come on. There's, yeah, there's no way. You are adventurous. Oh. Roz and I would do it. Whatever. <sighs> Secret campsite. <laughs> I see. You didn't even know. I found it. So you're welcome. Uh, I guess this is what backpacking really looks like compared to the magazines. Yeah, we're leaving it behind. That was it. That would be like a little tiny two person tent and I would do it. You'd have to do one heck of a um, bottom protector, ground cloth, whatever it's called, yeah. bottom protector. But that would tear your tent to shreds. <laughs> you have a bottom protector. I want to know. I just want to know the people that went up there and are like, yep, let's do this photo shoot. And they're like, oh yeah, you definitely couldn't actually, nobody in their right mind would do this. Eh, just set up the tent that we got from our supplier. <laughs> We're not actually going to sleep in it. Oh, just set it up. So where's the summit? That was it. So they said, don't worry, there's plenty. Can you get my reading material on <laughs> Yeah, they said, don't worry after. When well, I'm we... worried because now I don't know where we're sleeping. By um, Gap Run is where the, I mean, there's water and everything. So I don't want water. I packed all my water in. <laughs> I know. It's, Damn it. This is really just rapidly falling apart. <laughs> all right. So at this point, we're um, continuing on our loop. Back to the car. <laughs> Back to the car. No, we're continuing in the direction of the loop. Um, this is what we expected to do a little bit of... Look over there. We can look over here. Yeah. I mean, like you said, we have plenty of water. I don't <laughs> oh boy. Is this an illegal fire pit? Yeah. I just want everybody to see that this was already here when we walked up if we stay here. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Oh, a ton of wood too. So illegal. It's not like it said no fires right on the concrete pillar when we walked in. Well, this is nice views though. Mm -hmm. If we can make this work. I mean, look, it sweeps basically mm -hmm. all over there. Yeah. That's where the cliff is. So we could easily walk down to it carefully if we wanted to later. Cause it is, you know, we got plenty of time till sunset. The real problem is when, it, when is it gonna start raining? Yeah, that's what I just don't want. And after all that messing around, it's 2.45. I don't know if that's... Rain. It's rain? I think so. Yep. Okay, well then we're staying here. This will do. Okay, well, <laughs> let's just put a tarp up maybe over the flat area because we might end up setting up the tent right there. We love hammocks, but not only... I mean, we've tried before, we got some really nice hammock setups and even some hammock setups for a little tent for a dog that hangs off your hammock from Dutch Rigger. It's all awesome stuff. Problem isn't the gear, the problem is <laughs> Nolly is just a little needy. And um, we've just found he's better off being in a tent. We gotta go, it's starting to rain. This is the same system I showed on my last video. And uh, it's a Dutch, Dutch Wasp continuous ridge line. Got the little lock in feature there. And we're just gonna get it nice and tight and throw up the tarp first, which is not the same tarp from that the last video. It is Dutch Rare Xenai material. Um, it's a little heavier than Dyneema fiber, but it also costs a lot less. And so I'm able to have a really huge one. It's a pretty and color. Got the red ends I know on my clips. 
and just clip this baby to the continuous ridge line, which then I'll slide down. And where's my other red? Right there. And it's got a little S beaner on there. And then we'll take some tent spikes. Hopefully, I can use some branches and stuff. And um, just, I don't think this, well, hopefully it's not gonna be blowing rain too much as it gets, <laughs> start gets blown everywhere. Um, so for now, we're gonna go real super wide to give us lots of coverage. If it starts blowing sideways on us, then we'll have to pitch it lower. But, all right, we'll figure it out. Sarah's in relax mode. She's got, in the nick of time. she's got her mayfly chair. Wrong color, but that's okay. Yeah, that's actually my chair, but your blue one. Mm -hmm. I, I swapped out for my green one by accident, but looks just as comfortable. Nolly's in his uh, Netherlands sleeping bag from her friend Pim who made that for him and sent it over across the pond. Loves it. Got my pack all splayed open. I got the, uh, yep, the big old Walmart Ozark Trails four person car camping tent mm -hmm. right down in the middle of the Kaika. Uh, it's y'all are having kaka pack. That thing holds a lot. But, yeah. Glad to have it off my shoulders right now, though. And then here's the tarp, the Dutchware Xenon. This is actually meant for a two hammock system. So you would have two hammocks on one pair of trees. Um, so therefore it's super wide. And it also has some pole mods in there. You can put poles in it, like tent poles. Um, fle flexible ones. And really open it up. But in our case, we just have it super duper wide and it actually has doors on it which you can see we have we don't have them fully closed but see how they're pitched in right there now if we really wanted some more square footage we could lift those up and tie them to a tree or something but in our case it's just the way it worked out we didn't really have many trees around to be able to get a flat pitch on this thing tied to a branch there ideally we would have had a branch up here we got two going there so we got a little bit of slack in here but I mean, look, compared to how we would be if we had nothing but a tent right now and we were cooped up in that, or worse yet, still trying to put it together in the rain. Or find a spot. Oh, that's the worst. So later, whenever we get the uh, motivation, we can put together our Ozark Trails tent um, right underneath of here. Um, and we won't get wet while we do it as I stand out here and get wet. But I wanted to show you this. Uh, we got a little ridge line inside too. And that allows us to hang gear, let stuff dry. In our case, put a lantern, because why not? We're just basically car camping, only we hiked in uh, three and a half or four miles, whatever we're up to. So we earned it. <sighs> yeah, there you go. It's, uh, it works. I mean, it looks like we practically got an easy up in the middle of, uh, in the middle of Rocky Mount uh, in the illegal fire pit there that uh, <laughs> it looks freshly used. All right, it's picking up. I'm going to get underneath there. Um, might be pretty close to happy hour and then we'll figure out. Sarah was bringing up a good point. Whoa. Um, it would be nice to, we want to be responsible and set up the tent. Man, there it goes. Um, we want to set the tent up, obviously, just get it done. But at the same time, we kind of like having all this space under here. So, I don't know, maybe we'll chill for a little bit. If we get a break in the rain, we could always put it together and then... I mean, yeah, this is the best spot for the tent. I know. Um, right here, unfortunately. So, we will put the tent under here at some point. But it, it, it pops up pretty easy. Yeah. And without the stress of being rained on, it won't be a problem. So. There you have it. Maybe a little snack. Maybe a little afternoon wine. Maybe whatever we want. I'm enjoying listening to the rain. Yeah, I know you strictly budgeted your wine, so it's probably a little early to have one at this point I in the day. I budgeted my wine. You know. But that's why I knew this would happen. Oh no, what'd you say? So, <laughs> we have the boxes of wine as usual. We always do. All right, there's our budget of box wine. I kind of figured we'd be at camp a little early. So I figured let's try this brain. 
Oh no, what'd you bring? We'll split this can. It's actually we've tried this before. It's it's dark oh. horse. But I've never had it in the can. Fun, it's pretty. So it's a Pinot Grigio. We're sticking with white wine because pretty sure that if we brought red it would be cold. Um, from the uh, ambient temperatures. So oh, let's give this a try. It's working. The mountains have become obscured by clouds. Can't really see them, so we lost our mountain view for now. But let's try the dark horse. Ooh. Cheers. Cheers. All right. You both forgot gloves. Yeah, I had my thick ones. I thought they'd be a little too much, and I had plenty of pack space being taken up. And then I said, "Eh, I'll do a thin pair," and I just never did. And I guess Sarah didn't either. Yep, there's another <laughs> occasional dumps of water because we don't have it pitched out completely perfect, so it's not rolling off constantly. It's just kind of building up and then... <laughs> Will we want to do that? That's not the way you should do it, but it's the way it is right now. But I mean, will we want... We didn't even cheer, sir. Yeah. Cheers, we did for the camera. Uh, cheers. Cheers. We're going to do our dinner soon. Got two cans of tomato soup. And some grilled cheese. Tomato basil. Yes, they do fit on my BRS stove. This thing packs down small. 25 grams. I've showed it before, but I don't think I showed it with the little pot stand legs down. You can see how small that footprint is. It's pretty cool. But let's get it on the... Uh, let's get it on, baby. Let's get it on the canister. And you can see it's got those little teeth on there. So, believe it or not, even though the can is just barely big enough, those teeth kind of lock onto the edge. And um, a standard, like, chunky size can of soup actually stays on there pretty solid. I mean, I'm hitting it right now, and you would not be doing that while you're cooking. That would be stupid. So, it does work. Um, you just give it a stir every once in a while, but I'm going to be lazy right now. We do have this pot. I'm just going to pour some Ooh, tomato I'm soup. I'm lazy. You pack in 3,000 pounds of everything. I know, but this does mean we have to do dishes. No, that just means that we then do ramen. Oh, right. right. As I readjust myself. <laughs> oh, as you tuck in your shirt. <laughs> the geekiest shot. Um, <sighs> We're, then we do ramen, so that's basically... Late night ramen, yeah. which essentially will... Not late night, prof. I want to go to bed at like <laughs> Yeah, well, by late night, seven. Uh, hike or midnight is whenever it gets dark. So late night means like seven. five minutes from now. Um, yeah, so we'll just cook ramen noodles later, and it'll get a little tomato vibe to it, and that'll, <laughs> and that'll essentially like cook, or I mean uh, clean, our cooking pot, because I'm not messing with soap and everything. That'd be a total waste of water up yeah. here. Um, yeah. I'll just so, put bread in it. Just get up. some soup going and then got a whole stick of butter. We got these containers so our sandwiches don't get smushed. And inside. It's it, delightful. Now I've learned from my mistakes. Pre buttering is convenient. But the thing is, especially in cold temps, it'll be warm in your car. You get out here, it solidifies, it gets stuck to the container and gets all ripped apart. And that's no fun. It's not the end of the world, but I think we're just gonna start doing that from now on. It's classic aged cheddar. Let's get some soup heating up. Maybe one can's enough. That wind is lighting it up though. Are you about to say fierce? It is fierce. <laughs> oh, look at these life hacks. See, I told you he's needy. Now imagine <laughs> imagine this guy in a hammock. While well, you're in a hammock, what I should say. What can I do for you? This is what he does. He walks up and he puts his head over the edge of the hammock, tries to tip you out of it. What can I do for you, sir? Okay. Mm. I'll get you tucked back in. Mm. Tuck him back in. Is... There it is. Find your comfort. Tonight, rain. Patchy fog after midnight. Lows in the mid-40s. All right. This heated up really quick. Yeah. Well, a matter of minutes, so we're gonna take that off. The wind is getting it good. You need another rock? Might. Yeah, this is our windscreen here, this rock. <laughs> but it's working. Now I'll, I'll tuck the um, 
the soup over here. Maybe the lid. We're creating a nice habitat. Oh yeah. That did it. It's close. We've changed our home. Oh yeah, show them. So we um we did the doors. So the, the, the wind, I mean, we lucked out. That's just where the wind is pouring in through. So Sarah was like, heck no, there's no viewer over there anyway. So we um, shut the doors. And now, it feels a lot better than it did, don't you yeah. think? Um, and we still have a little view out here. Well, what would be a view? Maybe give this another flip just to melt the cheese. But I think, mm -hmm. I think it's good. And it's raining, come on. Grilled cheese and tomato soup in the rain. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Is it? All right, maybe I have to try it too, huh? Mm. I don't know. We might hit out of the park with this combo. And I feel like that was so random of me. I was like, I don't know, like grilled cheese, tomato soup. It's because we didn't have any backpacking food left. And then I realized we had to pack in our own water anyway. And Sarah was like, just get grilled cheese and tomato soup. And I said, yes. It's like, that's easy. Mm. Right? Tomato basil, so. Mm. And some red hot uts. Wow. Okay. Mm. Mm. This is definitely camping in the rain. And doing it right. Yeah. Are you reading about your secret campsite? I just want to know. Maybe we should turn on our lantern. Oh, they're foggy again. I just left them. It wasn't foggy. Yeah, the fog's rolling in and out. It gets brighter. It gets darker. It gets brighter. At this point, there is no visibility out here. I mean, look at this. It's 7 o'clock right now. Don't know how that happened. Don't know where the last four hours went. But when you're doing chores and... Slowly cooking one grilled cheese at a time eating and then eating grilled cheese and then eating soup and then readjusting tarps and then making sure the dog's okay. Um, yeah, four hours comes and goes. Did a little weather check on the radio like we saw earlier. Um, just looks like rain all night and then tomorrow. Um, hopefully it blows out of here in the morning. But... Yeah, we've just been eating uh, eating food and um, listen, to listen to some rain? yeah, listen to some FM radio uh, a couple times. Just popped it on. The rain is nice, but two or three times we just put the radio on. Got a random FM radio station, and uh, it's about the only time you do that nowadays, right? When you're stuck on the top of a mountain. Sarah's got her party lights up. I got the lantern. There's one thing we're missing right now, though. The tent with a mean game of go fish oh. with dice. Wow. So. And mainly the sleeping bag so my feet get warm. Yeah, Sarah's feet are a little <laughs> cold. I'm not gonna lie, I mine are cold too. I winter boots. These are my summers. We both have summer shoes on right now. Uh, and it's okay. easily in the 40s. Probably low 40s. And damp. Yeah. Just damp 40 degrees. And uh, these lightweight highly breathable shoes just um they're awesome in the summer but they get cold in these temps so mm -hmm. i am going to pull the old uh tent out here i guess Switcheroo. oh there it is there right there is all in our glory uh, easy peasy fresh and breezy four person dome tent all right Let's do it. Nine by seven feet. Uh 
Nah, it'll fit under here just fine. Only the fanciest tents are up to our standards. What is happening? I don't think this is the right part of the tent. Oh no! <laughs> we went through the vestibule. All right. When I saw you pick that one, I was like, I feel like that's wrong. All right. Yeah, that's for the I mean, little I like tiny your style, pole. but I don't think this. Is I'm actually really surprised we didn't rip the whole tent in half oh God, just now. So let's take the tension off <laughs> and oh walk away slowly <laughs> and try that again, people. That was oh, a failure. I'll, I'll own that one. I'll own that one. I'm not owning that. <laughs> All right, yeah, just lift. That's that one. Now you do your other one the same way. This is so relaxing. Oh, that looks good, babe. Sean? Yeah. It fits, it fits under there like a glove. All right, there we go. Now we better get the fly on there before the inside gets too wet. You went in there bad, don't you? What time is it? Noodle time, salmon nudes. I feel like it's been raining for... 29, 29 days. We've just been sitting in the rain for six hours, I think. <laughs> I think so. 72 and 92 days. We're doing some ramen rescue, which is basically packet gourmet got some chicken and vegetables and you add your own 20 cent ramen tent is all set up sarah's got her glasses on my contacts are bothering me just living the dream sure. nolly speaking of living the dream where is he how how nolly? The nolly where's nolly nolly where are you the nolly hey bob where'd you go <laughs> Nolly! Nolly? The noobs! Nolly, where are you, bud? No, he's not here. Oh, I hope he's okay. Well, that's a shame. Well. <gasps> Dear you, Bars! <laughs> Dear you, Bars! You're all combies. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're, it is still raining. We're all a little damp. Flash. Um, well, we got the tarp. <laughs> We got the tarp over top, <laughs> and uh, what is, what, what is, you okay? Uh -huh. <sighs> yeah, we're going to have some ramen rescue. I told you we would have a late night snack, uh -huh. and uh, I'm, I guess we're just going to listen to rain on the, um, well, not on the tent, but on the vestibule. On the Tarp on, the, on the tent. On the Dutch rare tarp that's above the tent. Night night. <laughs> Thank God this is an Instagram live. <laughs> There's so many rocks we're sleeping on. Don't hear raindrops, Nolly. What we got here? Hear a train rolling in the distance. Oh, that's a dark line of clouds there. Hopefully that's the system leaving. <laughs> but it's definitely clearer than it was last night. And it rained all night. It was lighter as we got into the early morning. And I think maybe by 6.30, something like that, it was pretty much down to a drizzle. But thankfully, the uh, tarp shelter and the tent worked out. Um, the one wall of the tent 
that was exposed to the elements. We started noticing from the inside, it's dry now, but it was weeping a bit. Um, no, it's not like one particular pinhole or anything, just the walls were weeping and it was running down and just a little bit of tiny bit of water that collected on the edge of the tent there, but nothing that was bad enough to, uh, you know, affect us. We're Denali. Night bud. Yep, shake it out. So, yeah, it's about eight o'clock. Slept in a bit, but now the train is telling me to wake up and maybe make some coffee and some pancakes and see if these clouds burn off. See where the day takes us. A little AeroPress this morning. Just uh, espresso grind in there. Pour hot water in. I did a double, so up to the two line. Stir, 10 seconds. Two shots of espresso. Now it's up to me. I can add hot water into it and make Americano, or uh, I can just sip on espresso. I already chugged some water when I woke up, hydration wise, so I think I'm just gonna enjoy myself and have a nice sipping gentleman's espresso. I don't know if my wife is, ooh, that is powerful. Wow. Okay. Ooh, that's good. And strong. Um, what was I saying? I don't know if my wife is um, quite awake yet. Not the way I'm going to be after this espresso. Nolly and I were out here for a little bit, poking around, and then uh, I let them go back in there, and they're both doing a morning nap. I got the gear out, kind of drying. Sarah's pack. We, she's good at keeping her pack cover on when it's raining, even when it's under the tarp. But I took her pack cover off to get something last night, and the bag got a little wet. So. Luckily, that ohm doesn't really absorb much water, but let it air out. Mine, my pack cover there, huge pack cover. And look at that sun. It is nice to have sun, and those clouds are they're clearing out. The view up here is beautiful. Let's see here. This is a, a roll of the dice. Sarah, you awake? I got coffee. I think I'll just have my own little coffee break for now. Somebody's awake. Not fully talkative yet, but the coffee's not done yet either. I'm talkative. I think it's pancake time though. So what we're gonna do is this. Pancake mix, got a little fancy. With the Kodiak cake protein pancake mix. Um, and then just our little Ziploc twist containers that we use for a lot of stuff on hiking. They haven't leaked on us yet. Use it for salsa, stuff like that. But in this case, it actually has measurement marks on there. So one cup of the mix, and then we'll add one cup of water, which basically means fill it up. Give it a shake and we got our own kind of uh, on the trail, hopefully. Easy pancake mix. Seems good enough, I think. Uh, the only downside is that I thought of, we, I did not bring a spatula this time. So all I have is well, my best option is probably the same fork that we were turning the grilled cheese with or the spoon end. I'm not sure. So that might get a little interesting. But I got my butter and then we packed in some legit maple syrup. Yeah. 
I think I should have added more water, but it looks like a pancake. All right, I think I'm gonna start maybe breaking some stuff down while Sarah's making her last batch of uh, maple leaf pancakes there. <laughs> so um, I'm probably gonna start taking down the tarp, which comes down just as easily um, as it went up yesterday. Actually, even easier, obviously. I'll pack that down and then uh, empty out the tent, of course. And you can see I was just using, this is my little $30. I don't even know if they make this anymore. One of those Amazon ones that they come and go. Um, I'll put a link in the video description if, if they actually still exist, but I'm sure you can find something similar. 30 bucks, this thing actually works pretty good. It's only about that thick, but it's fine. Sarah's got the Amok brand, which is the hammock brand, but it's the winter one rated to zero Fahrenheit, I believe, one degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. Her Outdoor Vitals pillow up there. She went with the Outdoor Vitals uh, Stormloft, I believe, the Mummy Pod by Outdoor Vitals. 15 degree guy down with the Dutch wear down booties. And I just went with the budget Ozark Trails brand, I believe, or Walmart brand, whatever you want to call it. Um, I scored this for 70 bucks a long time ago. It was just at Walmart and it's a 30 degree completely down bag and it works just fine. So I'll pack all that up. Check this out though. You can see our little reservoir here. See that? Luckily we have this ridge here. We couldn't have planned that better if we wanted to, but at first I thought it was condensation last night because you could just see it forming right around here. Like I said, no pinholes. It was just forming here. I was like, oh, it's condensation, but no, it was coming in and dripping off the bottom there so fast that basically that's when I figured out it was from the rain hitting it and um, it was just weeping its way through. Not great. Now, I'm not entirely not to blame. You can see how it's not really taut very well, not uh, very tightly pitched. Ideally, you want to get, you know, stuff as tight as possible so that the rain doesn't just sit there <laughs> all like it is right there on the fly. And that gives it the opportunity to weep through, especially if something's in contact with it on the other side. But in general, it's just because it's budget material. Um, the hydrostatic rating is probably much lower than something like uh, this nice Dutchware tent, or tarp rather, that um, probably saved this last night in more ways than one. But, all right, so that's that. I'm going to start breaking this down. We'll start making this place look like um, it was when we found it. And then we'll take it from there. It's about 11.30. Not bad. Still waiting for these clouds to completely get out of town. It won't move. I know. It keeps teasing us. There's a look, a nice break of blue sky right there. I know. It keeps moving right by. Oh, it's nice and blue right there. Well, that's what we need. Come on, blue skies. We have a nice sunny hike out of here. That'd be nice. The monster pack is ready to go again. Nolly's already wearing his. Sarah's got her little uh, packet. My packet? You belittling my pack. Not at all. You packed efficiently. I like it. A lot better than I did. Yeah, it's good, sir holding a lot of my ish. Yeah, that's all right. Or our ish, the tent. It's fun, I like to go from one extreme to the other. Sometimes very minimal. Other times, bring the kitchen sink. So, we have uh, done the once over. Camp is back the way we found it, except for yeah, a little cooking area that I'm gonna leave up here for blocking the wind and organizing and making pancakes and whatnot. So, we are ready to go. And we still got intermittent clouds, but that's all right. We'll see. It definitely makes a temp difference when you're in the shade versus not. Oh, wow. So pretty. You can hear that wind in the mm -hmm. distance, huh? 
I don't feel it, but you can hear it. Did you hear it last night? Woo! Yeah. Well, it is supposed to be gusts of 23 miles per hour today. Yeah. <sighs> oh, we're getting back up here, though. <laughs> That's all right. We are not looking to take any risks with that rain yesterday. And so far, I haven't seen any other campsite opportunities. Not yet, at least. Steep, loose rocks covered with leaves and various tree debris. Kind of slowing us down a little bit. We're definitely shedding a lot of elevation now as we get towards the junction with Gap Run. challenging walking across one of these scree fields here which are kind of like you can see in the distance way over there through the trees we're walking on that footing is a little tough on the upside Sarah pointed out that she can hear water in the distance and I think I can hear it too hopefully some milder trails down there along the water How cold is it? Woo! Woo oh, that's cold. Oh my God, that's cold. Refreshing. Oh. Sorry, buddy. I was good until at the very end when the water came up over my shoe. Oh, because you got Gore-Tex and they, <laughs> it went over the top? Yeah. They'll be wet for a little while. That's fine. That's all right. That's fine. This is the kind of stuff you, like you do on the last day. It doesn't matter. Like that. He was ready to play in it. Yeah, of course. Do you want to just set up like right here? Yeah, Maybe? let's just have a little chicken salad wrap that we've been marinating oh, no, on our new uh, Food Network show. Marinating? Yeah, rehydrating, <laughs> whatever it is. This is our Food Network show? Yeah, we show a, three <laughs> minutes of hiking and <laughs> an hour, three minutes. an hour of eating. I'm yeah. okay with it. That's, you that's a lot of it. You things that bring you joy too. Heck yeah, look at those purple flowers. On, getting lit up by the sun that I hope stays out for a couple minutes. Yeah. Turkey salad wrap for you. Yay. Thank you. Mmm. I want to try to turkey. Turkey, mesquite, Texas two-step smoked turkey, celery, chives, sweet cranberries, pepper cream dressing. Pretty good. good. Just been letting it rehydrate while we hike. Tasty. Yep. There's the junction right there. So, um, we'll make sure to take this in the correct direction and it'll bring us back to the beginning of the lollipop. Skyline Drive, four miles from here. So I guess it's four plus whatever we just did for the day. Come here, bud. But we'll be cruising a lot faster on these four miles than the, um, that rocky loose stuff we did. So we'll be good. Nice little clearing there. But that is the first opportunity we've seen for camping since the summit campsite that we came from, which was two-ish miles ago. If we had pushed on last night, we would have been definitely hiking down that rocky section in the rain. Not ideal. So keep that in mind if you do this loop. It's either all or nothing with staying up there or coming down here. Never fails. As soon as my feet dry out, back into the water you go. I believe that ridge up there is the intersection, the beginning of the lollipop. There it is. Jimmy Dean Corner. 
corner. 2.2. Remember this one? Skyline Drive. Well, at this point, we're just going to set up a tent in this intersection. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, though, as soon as we hit this bridge, that wind is kicking back up. So we're exposed to that again. But um, this is the lollipop part of the loop. Lollipop. Lollipop, lollipop. Who wants a lollipop? Lollipop. Ba -dum, ba -dum. Who wants a cheeseburger? I do, I do. Yeah, I want a cheeseburger more than a lollipop. But we're gonna finish the rest of this lollipop uh, loop. I just can't talk right now. But it's the uh, same way out that we came in. That wind! Unfortunately, you might not be able to hear the end of the trip. I apologize. It's windy up here. Last vehicle here. We did this on a straight weekend, so um, Saturday, Sunday. Really only saw there's one group of day hikers, one group of backpackers, so not bad for a national park. It is early spring, but that was pretty cool. The views have been amazing. And right now we are all pretty beat, pretty hungry, I do believe. So, I think that about wraps it up. We're gonna get these packs off, get cleaned up a little bit, hop in the vehicle, start the ride home, but not before, uh, you know, some important business that needs to be taken care of, a little calorie replacement. So, until next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now, it's cheeseburger time. This video was brought to you by Private Internet Access. Use the link in my video description and you can get complete digital privacy for less than $3 a month and three extra months free. Thank God this is an Instagram Live. <laughs>